Hey everybody, Lewis here from rope dope broadcasting live from East Philadelphia. You can look that one up. we got a special guest here today, Mr. Terrace Martin. All the way in East Philadelphia. Yeah. Is this East Philadelphia? Uh, technically it's, hey. well, I'm not even going to say it. I'm going to say it on, Where? on camera. So we're you know, look it up on a map, we'll figure it out. But <laughs> we have that East Philly vibe here and we're trying to, trying to make that clear. Oh, we're, we're, so, got, got Thank you for coming in. Uh, you do a lot of interviews with a lot of people around the world, and this is probably the most lo-fi, least professional interview no. you're gonna do. Cause uh, we're just hearing a story with camera on. I just had one more that was like it's probably gonna be the, the one. Yeah. He this, he had this dude had a mini disc. Okay. The other day he interviewed me on a mini disc, and, I, and he, he asked the most random <coughs> question. He said, "What soap do you use?" Seriously? Yeah. And the answer was? I don't want to do this anymore. Right, there, we go. <laughs> there we go. Well, when you set the bar low, then, then you get progress pretty quickly. There we go. So one of the first things that we cover on this is where we met. How how did we get connected? So do you remember when we met? Yep, downtown Los Angeles at nighttime. Right. I was... Uh, why was I even in Los Angeles? I think it was like a vacation and I flew down to LA and I looked up in the San Francisco airport, Jazz Clubs LA, and I found the Blue Whale. Yeah. And Miguel Atwood Ferguson was playing. And so I posted on Facebook, meet me at the Blue Whale tonight. And Ethan Farmer came out, uh, and Dombey was there. Uh, Sput came out. So Sput showed up late. Ah. End of the night, we were rolling around the corner to try to find a bar back at the hotel. And you were coming up the street with, with Adam. Adam. Adam Turchin, right? Yeah. He's and from around this neck of the woods, too. So, I, did, I had no idea that Sput knew you. So I thought we were just walking down the street late at night and two guys who were yeah. maybe not walking exactly straight. Yeah, you know, we were, were coming towards me. We were real happy that night. We were celebrating. Right, so you had just finished, finished up? No, no, a record? no we, we were in the middle of it. We you were in the middle, middle of it? doing it. That particular record, we, uh, we celebrate every day. There you go. Every day the celebration in the line. So we talked about cheesesteaks in Philly because Adam's from here. Yeah, we did. We talked about the White House and the best cheesesteak. And then you talked about a lot. Yeah. About jazz, hip hop, what you were trying to do in the music business. And I really didn't, I didn't, I had, I didn't know who you were. I had no idea. So I got back home, looked you up real quick, and I think it was only about a month or so, and the Kendrick Lamar to Pimp a Butterfly record came out. So yeah, we had just wrapped it up. All right, so. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that night, yeah. I remember that whole era. Every day felt like that night, though. Yeah, you know, it's like it, I was I was meeting special people every day. And through the course of that record, I probably met some like at least three special people who meet through the course of doing that record. The thing that hit me when I when I heard the record because I got it right away was it was everything you said. You know, it was jazz jazz musicians. Can you talk a little bit about how that whole connection came around? So like I met you through Spud. Uh, how do you know Spud? Well, I know Spud from just being, you know, Spud when, I met Spud like in 1997 or 98 in Los Angeles. Could have been 99. I don't know. I was in high school. I was a kid. And uh, Spud was staying in Los Angeles at the time. And I would see Spud every Thursday night for a couple of weeks at this jam session at the World Stage in Murray Park. The World Stage was founded by Mr. Billy Higgins. So, Spud would be at the jam session, and one night he decided to sit in. I heard him play drums. I was like, man, you can play. You know, let's, let's hook up again. So I got his number, and we all left. I didn't call him, and then we saw each other again at the Bellage, and we went to go hear Billy Higgins play. And I saw him again, then I called him, then we hooked up. And um, he flew to Texas, then he came back to Los Angeles. And we just built a strong connection. I took him all around him all the musicians of Los Angeles that, that I knew at that time was it's the same ones, you know, I took them around with Kamasi Washington and Isaac Smith and you know, Ronald Roy and 
everybody, just, you know, our same community now. So Spud's been around for a while, but then I started hanging out with Spud on his side in Dallas, Texas, and that's where I realized all these cats like Sean Martin and RC. I had to be like 17, because I was still in high school, playing all this amazing music, and they, they, they were, uh, they were, uh, I started hearing early things, like, then I would call it a hybrid. Then I would call it a hybrid, because a hybrid means two separate things that come together. I don't even believe in the hybrid no more. It's just the thing. So then it was a hybrid, because they were bridging a few different things, like a lot of jazz, a lot of hip hop, a lot of soul, a lot of gospel. It's like, they play a lot of jazz licks and harmony over the funk stuff. You know, how we go here, Roy Hargrove, he'll play a lot of those things, jazz stuff over the funk. And, uh, you know, it was, it was amazing. It was amazing back then. And that's where I messed, but he was like one of the early curators of that, bridging those type things together and making it good. Mm -hmm. A lot of people did it, but it just wasn't good until I heard the Dallas, Texas cats do it. So and that's it. So is that connection between Dallas and the Kirk Franklin thing, and then your, your world in LA, is is the connection you and Sput? Like, is that the primary? That's the only connection. Re that's that's what I mean. Is it the only? What other, where, it wasn't one before that. It, it hasn't been one after that. A lot of what happens with 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 this label is that like there's there's just a connection mm -hmm. from one person mm -hmm. to the next, and it's really interesting mm -hmm. in history to see. You know how that happens because now you look back and I mean it's yeah it's it's growing on both sides and it's and it's amazing and then most people know each other now right so everybody's everybody pretty much knows oh know each other now everybody kind of always have no know, known each other I think now everybody's being more social and working together and more willing to talk to each other and blend both things back back That's in those beautiful. back in those days it was a Dallas thing a L A thing a New York thing a Chicago thing a Philly thing right I think now. I think now, just because of these other bands and other things, like, it's, you know, I think now everybody's kind of bridging together. And, you know, you got a cat like Corey Henry. He has mm -hmm. cats from Omaha, Nebraska in his band. And, it, it, you Who's know, from Omaha? Uh, Nick, the keyboardist. Okay. Woo. My yeah. father grew up with his father. Really? Yeah. And he played in my band with Puff uh, at the Revolt thing I did for Puff. But, uh, I think now musicians from different worlds are like, I think that that's a LA, that's a New York. That, I think that thing is like, I think the internet kills that anyway. Right, so now there's there's a sense of collaboration. Mm -hmm. Everybody, yeah. every, well most, I said tell you, the, the successful the successful ones get it and they work together. Got it. The non-successful ones don't work together. Right. We don't even know them. In, in Where are you? <laughs> I get, you know, I mean, I. I at Rope It Ope, from 2008 to 2015, or 2013 maybe, big shift in the way people, artists looked at other other artists and, and mm -hmm. the business itself, whether it's competitive. And we, we talk about the front end of the business a lot. We don't talk about like the artists not getting in and not necessarily collaborating as much as they could yeah. in order to build a thing. Um, and Rope It Ope, and we talk about Sounds of Crenshaw in a second, I guess, is built on that. It's like, let's let's all just kind of have, have tools and a community uh, and a collaborative effort to keep the thing alive and keep it growing. Yeah. Man, you know the first person that told me it was going to be like this when I was 18? He saw the future on how artists are going to have to collaborate because now people see how it goes. We have, artists have to stick together. And we can't even, it's like, we just have to become one. R Raphael Sadiq told me this when I was 18. He was like, He's the one who taught me the swap program where I do a song for you, you do a song for me. We don't charge each other. We make money off of the game, not off the artistry amongst artists. That's he true. said it was going to be like that. So I remembered that, and I took that, and I ran with that because we, me and my crew been doing that. It was after Raphael Sadiq told, us that, told me that we started doing that. And that was I was 18, so, you know, that was always my thing. So when I met Spud, another dude that maybe he probably didn't hear it from Ray, but he just had it anyway. So that's right. why we stuck together. Another dude, a Robert Glasper, he probably didn't hear it from Ray, but he had that too. Now here we are now, you didn't hear it from Ray, but you had that too. It's, right. it's, it's like, 
that that's what you know brings it together. Back then, you just had to bump into a cat that felt the same way. Now you can go online and meet other people that feel the same way by going through their Instagram and seeing their mm-hmm. pictures look like yours. So now you have about something in common without having to go far. That's what the internet just killed, you know. Which it is, is. Or, or that's what the internet just just gave birth to, yeah, right? Yeah, it did. It, yeah. Or brought back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like a natural human thing to connect in groups mm-hmm. and to find similar people, you know, people with similar mm-hmm. goals and tastes. Yeah. Now you can just plug in. And but that's what we're doing with records. Yes, it's just the same concept of togetherness. I tell everybody that's what I taught America was what it was supposed to be was different colors, different sizes, different shapes, and everybody together. I didn't know it was going to be what it is now. But that's what I was thought. So I'm trying to do music and be with people that remind me of what I heard America was supposed to be like. So maybe wow. I could imagine sometime I'm in a country t- of being free. I could imagine it. Mm-hmm. I could imagine it. <laughs> wow. You know, through, and, and you can sing about it, and you can preach it, you can talk yeah, about it, you know. and you can actually do it. You're yeah. connecting with people because you know when you when you live how we live, you're free. I'm free. You know, I don't. I see everything going on. I see everything going on, but I'm free, man. You know, I'm not in no captivity. I'm damn sure not no motherfucking slave. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like I'm I'm free. You gotta surround yourself with people that feel free as well. Free. You know what I'm saying? Free. And sometimes you just build it. You just do it. So sometimes right? you gotta inspire others because they want to be free, but they don't even know they want to be free because they've never been free. I never seen nobody be free. We had a conversation last night about that. It's like so, like the resistance to the the power mm-hmm. is also part of the power. Yeah. And you just kind of like instead of standing and fighting that, you you go and you you, you create mm-hmm. a free space. So you're moving on and you're transcending it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. cool. So that's what sounds of Crenshaw. I want you to just kind of say in your own words what what sounds sounds of Crenshaw means, but just for the for the. People who know Rope and Oak Sounds of Crenshaw is one of the imprints in a growing network of collaborative imprints. It's all Terrace Martin and what your vision is. Yeah. And the whole point of that imprint network is to put artists in charge of the music and the business and connect them together to share tools. Mm-hmm. So what um, what do you want to say about Sounds of Crenshaw and, and, and Sounds what's of Crenshaw with it and where's it going? Sounds of Crenshaw is built to teach and inspire. How to teach and inspire artists how to be their own boss and how to make their own moves. That's why the deals I do on Sounds of Crenshaw are partnerships. I don't own nobody, they're partnerships. I want to teach and inspire somebody. I want to show them how to fish just like Wiz Khalifa and, and Top Dog showed a lot of people how to fish, especially Top. And Snoop showed me how to fish. I want to teach others how to, so I don't want to keep doing the same business things that the traditional business people have done. It's been a lot of good business. It's been a lot of bad business. It's been a lot of agreed business. That's some other kind of business. You know, I usually do good or agreed. Bad is just hard. Agreed isn't. And I made that shit up. That's I've been using that for years. That's um. When you go to court and plead no contest, I mean, it's not admitting neither one. It's just like, uh, we just dealt with it. But I'm trying to exclude all those energies and show artists how to be artists. So that's why on Sounds of Crenshaw, I'm only working with artists that understand free mentalities and also understand growth. And they want to learn how to inspire others as well so we can each one teach one to keep it moving. So Sounds of Crenshaw, not only does it, does it do that, but the music is going to sound like that. You know what I'm saying? It already sounds like that. We get it. Everybody I work with, from Mayla Hathaway, Robert Glasper, Kendrick Lamar, whoever it is, Snoop Dogg, Keon Harrell, every, all my squad is a giving squad. I want you to be able to feel that through Sounds of Crenshaw. Another thing I like about Sounds of Crenshaw personally, the title, Sounds of Crenshaw. I come from the Crenshaw district where at one place was ruled, it's still ruled by the dark side sometimes. You know, but I come from a place where if you say the Crenshaw district, all you do is think about is gang bang, crack cocaine, prostitutes, everything, and you know, people pulling up, getting shot and killed, liquor stores and churches. That's what society that's what the news will play tell you, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But I didn't see none of that growing up on Crenshaw and Slauson. I saw all beautiful things. Now I may see some things that people have to deal with some things because they got into some things. 
but that's them and their things. What I saw on Crenshaw, what I saw in South Central was beautiful. Palm trees, creative artists, people of all walks, all colors. You know what I'm saying? Grass in their front yard. You know what I mean? Like I went, we went through, I went to private school, I went to Marcus Garvey on Slauson. That's right in the middle of the turf. And then to go home every day and look at the news and see how America is painting your neighborhood with all these, you know, mm -hmm. some things that happen, but all these extra dollar lies so the value could go down, not only with the property value, but your human value. You could think of yourself less of what you're supposed to think of yourself as in these communities. So that was a rough thing too. So Sound of Crenshaw, the music I heard at that time was NWA, Easy e EPMD, BDP, Key Sweat, Guy, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, The Far Side, John Coltrane, Miles Davis, Sonny Stitt, Led Zeppelin, Frank Zappa, George Duke, Eddie Cleanhead Vincent, DJ Scratch, Battle Cat, Bobcat, DJ Pooh, Dr. Dre, the Baker Boys, Big Boy, Theo, DJ Quick, High C, Broadway, Hey, uh, hey, you know, Herbie Hancock. That's a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. So I can't say, like, why would I ever cut myself short and say I'm a jazz musician, or I'm a funk musician, or I'm a rap musician, or I'm a hip hop this, I'm a that, 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 that. Nah, that's why I want to kill that. That's why it sounds, it's just the sounds of Crenshaw. Those sounds motivated me and got into my bloodstream and in my spirit and made me want to bang out how I bang out on the drum machine or on the saxophone. We should wait till that go. Perfect guy. Yeah, this is real. Little slice of Philly coming through. That's how they bought the guns and cocaine into my community. Seriously? The trains, they would have the trains go down lost in the tracks and just stop. And then the guns and everything, and everybody's running still the guns. And then they're trying to Wow. So arranged. Yeah, it's arranged, man. Wow. They, they put the guns. Wow. Who do we know with those kind of guns? Right. You think we got to connect like that? So, so I'm sorry, am I cutting you off? I know the train came in. No, I'm cool. You good? You good? Um, Sounds Crunch all just represents. I went off on that to just to just to really be clear with everybody that may not be that may not understand what I say. Sounds of Crenshaw just represents a gumbo of creative things that I grew up seeing. And I come to find out that you don't have to be from the Crenshaw district to see those things, but I found out everybody, more than I thought, grew up seeing those things as well too. And there they was lied to too. But it's not just the ghetto that was lied to, it's also I got white friends that was lied to through through TV and everything. You know? My white rich friends in Beverly Hills thought some of them told me, man, we thought we had to act like that. We thought we had to be little you to feel like this. This is what they taught us. Mm -hmm. These were my friends, you know? My first saxophone teacher that really sat down and taught me is my own boy, Ben Wendell. My first ever Jewish friend in my life, Ben Wendell. Santa Monica High School, now he's a saxophone jazz star. You know, he was with us with Snoop Dogg. He was with us with Kamasi, he was with us the whole ride. Benji Lysit, another one of my white friend guitar players. Bad. These are my, I'm, I'm referring, because I didn't, where I come from, I didn't see white people. So when I got to ninth grade and they was playing how they was playing, way beyond me. Skilled with reading music and everything. I just had heart. And what we did was met each other in the middle, I, pretty much without speaking about it. You teach me, because they had nine years of lessons before I got to the saxophone. That's how right, white kids right. grow up. So they had nine years of lessons. I didn't have those. I just, my dad gave me a horn. Here, you want to play? Go get a record and play. Luckily, I bumped into some guys. My mother sent me to Santa Monica High School. I bumped into Ben Window, and he had that classical thing down because he already was a bassoon player. Because where he come from, they had it to do. It's a different side of it. They had resources. To do. Yeah. But I had heart, I had soul, and I didn't give a fuck, and that's what they wanted. And I wanted what they had. So without speaking about it, we exchanged that. Mm -hmm. And we built the ultimate early foundation, what I feel is what is today, but not just Los Angeles, but what is really 
pushing the movement along with other people forward in the music that's going on today. Mm -hmm. Whatever category, whatever you want to name it, we every every last one of my friends was in every category of the Grammys last year. That started from this court. You know, a lot of people have asked me, you know, this, uh, uh, um, humbly speaking, jazz musicians, you know, saying, well, you know, Los Angeles, who knew? You know, like, what's happening there? And they're like, there's a foundation, there's a foundation. Can I say, let me, let me it tell you. just happen like that. And let me touch yeah. on all these cats. Let's talk about all these cats shocked with Los Angeles. <clears throat> like, first of all, when they're shocked in Los Angeles, who would ever thought? I'm like, where the fuck have they been? Because mm -hmm. what do you think? But they don't see the foundation. What do you think Dexter Gordon is from? Where do you think Eric Dolphy is from? Where do you think Billy mm -hmm. Higgins is from? Where do you think Sonny Chris is from? Where do you think Patrice Rush is from? Where do you think Indugu Chancellor is from? Where do you think Billy Child is from? Yeah. Where do you think they're from? Well, these are these are all middle guys from the you know who, whose careers span from like eighty late '80s to or, you know early 2000s. Still career now, but you know that's their heyday. So in that time frame, I think, and it goes back to what you're saying about how I, how people pick up a story. Hey, can I say something? Like L.A. hip hop. Let me say this. Hip hop. Them cats know that act like L.A. They all came to L.A. and got their ass whipped on stages. Just like we all went out there and got our ass whipped in different places too. So they, so they might just not be. They know what's up. Telling. And guess what? Right. If they're shocked at L.A., then they not even in the game. Just ask Robert how long he been on by L.A. Ask, Where's Robert from? Houston. Ask her Herbie Hancock. Ask her Herbie Hancock. How you doing? Ask her. Yeah. Ask my. I, I, you, you wanna you you wanna keep going with this one? Like, but that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Like, I, cause I I hear it too. But usually when I hear it, it's from a cat that just is not. I, and I gotta say, man, you need to pay more attention. You ain't going far. Cause watch this. It's a scene in Wichita, and I'm hit tonight. You know why I'm hip to that? Because I have to be hip to that. It's my fucking job to be hip to be hip to that. <laughs> I got to know what's going on, when it's going on, how it's going on. Right. So I won't be left behind. I can't be left behind. You put in work. I, I won't be left behind. So work. guess what? I'm going to find out where it's at, see what it is, and say, hey, I want help. What is that hip shit? I, I got some shit I can give you. Give me some shit. Let's just do, let's be art brothers or arts brother and sister, but let's boom. Let's not do what, how, uh, mm, uh, mm. That's how you miss out. You can't learn nothing like that. That's why them kind of guys, man, they all get the same jam sessions with the same shirts and with the same bitches all the time. There you go. The ugly ones, too. And ugly ain't gotta be look. Your attitude make you ugly, baby. Your attitude make you ugly, baby. Peace. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Still open for collaboration, of course. Um, so I I came up to New York. I saw you there. The, the policies, the policies, the policies, yeah. and what's happening. You got a Europe tour coming up. I got a Europe tour coming up. The policies. That is a collective of what I what I believe my opinion to be some of the best musicians from from around the world. We're doing the album right now on Sounds of Crenshaw, and it's a collective of all the cast that that have done a lot of records with me, you know, from Trevor Lawrence, Jonathan Barber, Tamar Gable, Rose Gold, uh, Marlon Williams, Brandon Owens. I mean, the policies is, is a huge collective, a huge group. I'm only taking a few out on, on the road with me as my backup band. Because A, I can't afford record producers that I have on the road with me because most of the musicians that I work with are record producers. Uh -huh. And they are expensive, but I can get them to do a record. So I gotta take Time, time, take this group, that group. But right now, we're all under this thing where we all have to work together, you know. Everybody's a producer now, so right now, we're all just gonna spread the word of love. And I want the name of the poly seeds because it represents uh, the sunflower seed. That represents California from the West Coast. Flowers represents like the love movement. It represents growth, you know. Uh, it represents we're, we're, we're not here no more. But when a flower dies, another flower comes up. That's just the cycle of life. And the poly seed term just comes from being from South Central. That's what we call sunflower seeds, poly seed. And 
I'm from the West Coast, and that's just the heart of it. So the poly seeds is a movement, and um, they'll just see the music side to the poly seeds on the tour. Beautiful. But we're doing a cartoon, and we have poly seed characters and merchandise, and I'm doing a poly seed short film. We have poly seed, the poly seed film production as well, too. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, might be doing poly seed vodka, poly seed water, the poly seed hits. You poly seed, poly seeds. <laughs> the poly seed, poly seeds. <laughs> Chocolate can do that. Well, listen, man, I, I just want to take this opportunity first to thank you for coming here and hanging out, but also just in general for connecting with me, right. for respecting what I do, what we do here at Rope Dope, and for being part of that collaborative thing and actually being a, a leader in, in that whole process and for what you do out, out in the world, just putting that positive message out there. Well, it's really serious. You are a part of the new thing, the cutting edge, not the same old ass rules that people felt they had to follow all these weird rules and roadblocks. You treat what you do like how a true artist that represents the moment treat how he does. And that's how it has to be. It has to be, people have to be one collective, one thing, and one agenda. If there's too many agendas going on within the group, boom. There you go. Boom. And so Rope Dope is the home for one agenda, beautiful love, spread the thing of, you know, music. Sounds of Crenshaw. We're going to keep rocking out nice. and bringing that good music. Rope Dope, baby, sounds of Crenshaw. Medical cannabis should be legal everywhere. <laughs>